And welcome back YouTube. This is Booster Box Buster here with another full game review. This time we're taking a look at Ambition of the Slimes on the Nintendo Switch Entertainment System. This game is published by Circle Entertainment and developed by Alterworks Corporation. Now Ambition of the Slimes is a strategy, tactical, role-playing game in the style of your Disgaea or your Final Fantasy Tactics. In this game you play as a group of slimes who are one day fed up with being the level one punching bag in your typical RPG. They like said enough is enough and they want to be recognized as more than just slimes. And in order to do this they take the fight directly to the humans. Now, slimes on themselves, they know that they are weak. So how do they take the fight to the humans? Simple, by controlling the humans. They gain control of other humans and use that particular human's body to fight their comrades. Now, the way that they gain control of the humans and other humanoid creatures is very unconventional at best. That is, they jam themselves straight down the gullet of their opponent and take control of the body from the inside. Something almost straight out of a horror movie, if you ask me. Now, something I always found intriguing and thought-provoking, but never explained in the game, is once you beat the stage, how does the slime get out of the human body so they can uh, move on to the next stage? Do they just explode the human body into a billion pieces, or do like a little like alien chestburster type thing? Do they secrete themselves out through one of the other you know, orifices in the human? Um, that's never explained, and probably for the better, if you ask me. <laughs> if you do happen to finish a stage and co and win and uh, gain victory, you have the chance to recruit one of three possible slimes. Usually the odds are given at the beginning of the stage to tell you, hey, you have a, if you win, you have a chance to, like a 40% chance to gain this slime, a 40% chance to gain slime X, and a 20% chance to gain slime Y. Usually the smaller percentage one is a much better slime. That's why you have less chance to get it. But a chance nonetheless, so that is very nice. The slime variety in this game is actually quite nice. There is a very wide amount of slimes to choose from and I'm going to show you right here in the collection. With a total of 33 different slimes that you could collect and have in your party, the slime variance is huge. You have just regular slimes, slimes that give you a higher percent chance to take over your opponent, slimes that split in two, uh, tele slimes that can teleport any other enemy or slime comrade to anywhere on the map, but they cannot teleport themselves. Slimes that can teleport themselves to anywhere on the map, but nobody else. Slimes that give you pluses in the offensive, defensive, magic offensive, magic defensive, or uh, ranged non-magic attack category. Slimes that are 100% immune to magic, and so on and so forth. I do like the variety of slimes in the game. They are really, really cool. And they do have pretty cool looks to them as well. As you can tell, there are a few that are question marks. Those are slimes that I was never able to attain myself, that maybe you can obtain in your playthrough of the game. The game's battle system is pretty easy to understand. Uh, basically, if you are on higher ground than your opponent, you will deal more dam- the higher ground person will do more damage to the lower ground person. And there is a rock, paper, sister, rock, paper, scissors 
like mechanic in the game as well. You have three elements, and each element can beat each other. You have fire that could beat uh, grass. You have grass that could beat water, and water that could beat fire. Now, of course, that sounds like the Pokemon starting uh, trio, and of course, that's, I'm guessing, where they took the inspiration from. In addition to this information, if you have a slime that has the same element as the human that you're trying to take over, if you are successful in the human takeover, you will gain bonus attack and defense as that particular human. Sorry about that. Alright, let's move on. Now, of course, there are certain enemies, like for instance, I'm going to show you this guy right here, the Heavy Infantry, that is much more resistant to slime takeover, as when he is in his armor fully, you only have a 1% chance to take him over. If you can remove him from his armor, then you have a much higher chance to take over his particular uh, unit. And there are some units... Like, for instance, let me find one. Like, for instance here, the Queen, you cannot take over her at all. She is a unit that is 100% immune, or these uh, monsters here. These monsters, you cannot take over them at all. 100% immune from being taken over by the opponent. Now, of course, like any... SRPG, or tactical RPG, you can indeed gain experience points which will help your characters level up. Now of course these slime, only the slimes that are in battle will get level up points as any ones that are in your reserves will not. In my experience, leveling up your slimes does almost nothing. Sure you get a little more HP, a little more defense, but you might be able to withstand one extra hit, but you're still a slime, so you're going to go down in about two to three hits, no matter what opponent you're facing. And by the time you get to the end game, the, the EXP requirement is typically so high, it's not really worth the grind to get your slimes up to a really high level. I didn't get one past level 40, and honestly, I don't know how much further past level 40 the leveling system actually goes in this particular game. This game puts the emphasis on tactics, the emphasis on strategy. Since you really can't level up your way to beat a level, and there's no items to use at all in the game, and very little ability additions to, like the slimes, basically, whatever ability they have, that's what they have. They don't have any additional abilities that they can learn throughout the game. They might be able to increase the ability, but they can't learn anything new. So, without being able to power level your way past some levels, or past some stages, you have to strategically use slimes with abilities that will best suit fighting your opposition. You have to strategically move them around the map into best positions to take over your opponent, and you have to and you have to hope that the AI and RNG damage calculator is on your side for certain levels because this game is tough. This is not a beginner's RTS whatsoever. Or not RTS. SRPG. This is for advanced players in the strategic role-playing game Tactics Realm. I highly recommend you have experience with other... Uh, SRPGs before you play this one, or else you will probably get steamrolled and have a very frustrating, very unfun time. 
I apologize about that. I knocked my camera out a little bit. Woohoo! Okay. With that said, the game actually features quite a fair amount of story. As you can tell, there's eight stages in this 30 years later over here. That's an unlockable stage that you can get once you complete all the story stages. And each, or not stages, each world contains anywhere from four to six levels inside of it. So it and not only that, but as you can tell, there's different levels of challenge that you could do. Easy, normal, and hard, as far as storyline goes, contains the exact same story, it's just slightly different. Maybe an enemy removed, maybe a different enemy swapped out for a less challenging enemy. And then the challenges actually progress the story for that particular stage. For instance, in one level you'll be like, oh, what are these group of slimes doing here? Let's wipe them out. And then if you play the challenge version of that stage, there will be like, what happened to all of our friends? They never came back. And then they find the slimes and like, could have these slimes killed them? No way. So then they challenge the slimes. So it's kind of like a nice little addition to the story. So I do recommend playing it on either easy, normal, or hard, and then doing the first challenge to get the full grasp of the story. You don't have to do the additional challenges because it's the exact same thing as the first challenge, just harder. And t let me tell you, the challenges get very hard toward the bottom of them. And, uh... Although, if you do the higher level challenges, you do have a better chance to recruit some of the harder and better to get slimes in the game. So, the choice is yours to make. I will say this, the graphics in the game are a very mixed bag. The land, the world, looks like a very Super, Super Nintendo, maybe PlayStation 1 era. That very, like, early PlayStation 1, late Super Nintendo era. And, and I like that. Like, the wor over overworld map, very cute, very lovely. The characters in battle are very reminiscent of an 8-bit style. So it's okay. Uh, but the real winner in the collection here is the character portraits themselves like close-ups, and you will see these when they enter battle in the battle phase. This is where it's really at. I mean, look at these. These look like they're straight out of an awesome manga or online art. Just very cool. So the best images come in battle, and one really cool thing, if you use the acid slime, on almost any unit, you can get their underwear format, which I'll show you here. For, uh, oh, I never got the uh, farmer underwear, huh? Okay. But for instance, the miner. All of a sudden he's, whoa, no! I'm in my undies! That, y you get his uh, underwear format, and that's kind of funny. And you, and once you beat a stage, after seeing a character in their underwear, you get that image unlocked in the character gallery, which is really awesome. Unfortunately, not every character has an underwear form because some characters are immune to acid, so that is a bit of a shame. Like, for instance, this character here. Oh, apologies about that. This character here, you can't get him in his underwear because he has he is immune to acid. But uh, this character here is. Oh, maybe she is immune. Uh, which one would it be? This character here is not immune to acid, so that's what they look like in their underwear. Unfortunately, the character models look very similar. Just uh, different, typically just different hair colors. But I can understand that it's something that not everybody's gonna see. Something that's very uh, specific to one type of slime, or two types of slimes, and... So it's, it's something that is just more of a fun little challenge you could try to get yourself to unlock all the uh, underwear models of all the characters, which I kind of 
I think I did for almost all of them, so that's kind of cool. E even this king here can be in his underwear, which is kind of funny. I'm not going to lie, the music in the game, especially when you get to a battle screen, in my opinion, it's kind of ear grating. The music is not is probably one of the weakest points of this game. It, when I played it, I played it with the music off, and I just turned on my own music. Much more better. Just put on some Final Fantasy Tactics music, or maybe some you know, Disgaea music. If it's it's much better sounding than this game's music. So the music is probably one of the weakest points of this game, and the uneven difficulty curve. Overall, this game offers plenty of content for your money, and if you are a hardcore strategy tactical RPG player, you're going to have a lot of fun playing this game. If you like really good graphics and really good music, this game is probably not for you. And if you like... If you like the idea of taking control of people's bodies by going inside of them and controlling them from the inside out, then this game is definitely for you, although that's a really weird thing to be uh, specific about there. Overall, even with the ear grating music in my eyes, this game is definitely worthy of being in your collection of strategy tactical role-playing games. My final verdict is a solid 7.5 out of 10. Official Booster Box Buster score. Apologies, that did knock the camera. So with that said, I hope you enjoyed this review, and give this game a try if you can find it for a good deal. This is Booster Box Buster, with an official full game review of Ambition of the Slimes on the Nintendo Switch Entertainment System from the Nintendo Switch eShop, signing out.